Okay, guys, hopefully this will be our last video for lesson 1.1. We left off on page 10. Um, we're looking at now how we find a midpoint. So we do have some vocabulary here. Uh, anytime you see those highlighted terms, that is a vocabulary term. So the midpoint of a line segment is the point that divides the segment into two segments that have the same length. A line, ray, or other figure that passes through the midpoint of a segment is a segment bisector. In the figure, the tick marks show that PM equals MQ. Therefore, M is the midpoint of PQ, segment PQ, and line L bisects segment PQ. You can use paper folding as a method to construct a bisector of a given segment and locate the midpoint of the segment. So we're going to look at what that would be. So we're going to come over to page 11. And example three, it says, so use paper folding to construct a bisector of each segment. So we are given in A, we're given this, this line segment, A, B. Step one, use a compass and straight edge. So again, this is something that is in theory how you could do it. I'm not asking you to necessarily do this, okay? Because you do not have a compass at home. A straight edge is just, like it could be a ruler because it has a straight edge, but it doesn't necessarily have to have any marks on it. It's anything that's edge is straight. That's a straight edge. Use a compass and a straight edge. So step one, to copy segment AB on a piece of paper. All right, and this is our, our gray piece of paper here. Step two, fold the paper so that point B is on top of point A. So you wanna make it so they actually touch right there. And then step three, open the paper and label the point where the crease intersects the segment as point M. Okay, so you have this crease in your paper and right on the line segment where it is, that's point M. That is the midpoint of segment AB, and the crease is actually another line. It is a bisector line of segment AB. So, for B here, step one, use a compass and a straight edge to copy segment JK on a piece of paper. So, if we were doing this, we would take a compass to create this line segment on a piece of paper. Step two, we would fold the paper so that point K is on top of point, ready, what is it gonna be? Point J. Step three, sorry, I'm getting very excited. <laughs> Open the paper. Label the point where the crease intersects the segment as point N. All right, we're using a different letter this time. Last time we used M, but this time we're using N. It doesn't have to be M if it's a midpoint. It's just a letter representing the midpoint, okay? Point N is the midpoint of JK. So I wanna write the word midpoint here. Try, I can't write with highlighter. That's not a good idea. Let's use a pen. Midpoint. I do want to clean up my J right there. It looks a little better. <laughs> and the crease is a bisector. Step four. Make a sketch of your paper folding construction or attach your folded piece of paper. You do not have to do that. Okay. Um, we are going to just skip over number nine. So I'm going to move on to page 12. All right. And we are not going to do 10 either. Okay. But we are going to look at, um, we're on page 12. We're on explain four, finding midpoints on the coordinate plane. You can use the midpoint formula, Right, this is a midpoint formula to find the midpoint of a segment on the coordinate plane. Okay, so this is definitely something you would want to put in your notes the midpoint formula. This is another main idea. 
the midpoint M of segment AB with endpoints A at X1, Y1, and B, X2, Y2 is given by M. Okay, so these are the coordinates of M, and they look a little complicated, okay, coordinates of M. But basically, you add the two X values together and divide by 2. And then for the Y coordinate, you add the two Y values together and divide by 2. And that will give you the midpoint. So, I mean, you, you wouldn't have to necessarily have it graphed out so that you could see it. But um, it could help if you did have a visual picture, definitely. All right. So... For example four, we are going to show that each statement is true. Okay, so right here on A first, we're going to read through this. If segment PQ has endpoints P, negative 4, 1, and Q, coordinates 2, negative 3, then the midpoint M of PQ lies in quadrant 3. Okay, so we got to remember our quadrants here. So I'm going to open up my ruler because I do want to draw uh, a little coordinate plane for you. So let's, let's use this galaxy pen. That's pretty fun. <laughs> You're like, sure, Miss Dolan. Totally fun. Um, okay, so there is a little uh, coordinate plane sectioned into four quadrants. And we are going to label. Uh, remember, your first quadrant is here. Quadrant one, that's where everything's positive. X and Ys are both positive. Quadrant two is here. Uh, your Xs are negative in quadrant two and your Ys are positive. Moving around, we're moving counterclockwise. Quadrant three, here both X and Y coordinates are negative and our last quadrant, quadrant four, here our X is our positive and our y's are negative. So to prove in part A here that our midpoint lies in quadrant three, that means we want to get coordinates that are both negative. And so that's what they're showing. Use the midpoint formula to find the midpoint of PQ. Let's go back with my highlighter and um, we're going to highlight our x's in one color. Let's use blue this time. So negative 4 and 2 and you can see this is where they subtracted negative 4 and 2 and then they subtract the y's let's use pink y, 1 and negative 3 so they subtracted them over here notice that we're using the p coordinates first and the q coordinates second you have to make sure you're consistent with your order um, but you could reverse it And once you have that sum, you divide each of those by 2, and that's where they're getting this negative 1, negative 1. Um, because negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. Divided by 2 is negative 1. All right, so uh, M lies in quadrant three since X and Y coordinates are both negative. It's been proven. Okay, so now we are going to move on to B. Okay, so it's it's kind of setting us up. We have it structuredly laid out we just have to fill in the missing pieces if rs has endpoints r 3 5 and s negative 3 negative 1 so the x values are 3 and negative 3 it goes here and here and then our y values are 5 and negative 1 it goes here and here so that's showing me that i need to plug in negative 3 right here, and I need to plug in negative 1 right here. As I simplify this, um, 3 plus negative 3, well, that's 0. 0 divided by 2, that's also 0. So I'm getting 0. 
5 plus negative 1 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. All right, so I have my coordinates of the midpoint. It's 0, 2. And um, use the midpoint formula to find midpoint of RS, substitute the coordinates, and simplify. So M lies on the Y axis since, well, we know it does because our X coordinate is 0. So, oops. See, I did that thing again where I try writing and then touching the screen and then it just goes crazy. Okay, so uh, because the x coordinate is zero. Okay, guys, so we are getting close to being done uh, with this page. <laughs> All right, your turn. Show that each statement is true. So let's just do one of these, okay? I'm going to do 11 with you because I feel like my videos are maybe too long, but I guess more is better than not enough. Okay, <laughs> if AB has endpoints A with coordinates 6, negative 3, and B with coordinates negative 6, 3, then the midpoint B of segment AB is the origin. So we're trying to prove it's the origin, but remember what the origin is, in case you forgot, um, the origin is coordinate 0, 0. All right, so that's what we're trying to prove. And so we're going to start with our formula, M, and then we have... Uh, an x coordinate here where we're going to be adding some stuff and dividing by 2, and then a y coordinate here, adding some stuff, dividing by 2. Okay, so that, that's just the formula. Now I got to figure out what do I put where. So let's come back and what colors was I using? Blue for x. All right. So get my blue highlighter and x and x we have six and negative six those are going to go there and then i'm going to highlight my y values which are negative three and three and they're going to go here so i got to make sure my order is consistent as i plug these values in so we're going to do six uh, plus negative six and that means i'm going to write negative three plus positive three and if I go ahead and simplify this, then 6 plus negative 6 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is, well, 0. And negative 3 plus 3, that is 0. Divided by 2 is also 0. So m has the coordinate 0, 0, which is, in fact, the origin. That is exactly what we wanted to happen. Um, so we proved it. We're good. All right, we're just going to skip 12 for right now because... I want to move on with you guys to page 13. This is the last page we're going to look at. We're going to skip over 13 and 14 and 15, but I do want to look at 16 with you because it's your essential question. Okay, so in the first video, I read it to you, um, which I think it would be a good point to revisit what it actually was at this point in time. So let me go back to it. Your essential question is, how do you draw a segment and measure its length? That's what you're supposed to be able to do with this lesson. And for number 16, what is the difference between finding the length of a segment that is drawn on a sheet of blank paper and a segment that is drawn on the coordinate plane? Okay, so we are comparing two different ways of doing that. And so um, a possible answer that you guys can have here is maybe you use a ruler to find the length of a segment drawn on a sheet of blank paper. And you would use the distance formula to find the length of a segment on a coordinate plane. So I will type that in for you. Use a ruler to find the length of a seg 
Equipment, Ron, on a sheet of blank paper. And the distance formula to find the length of a segment on a coordinate plane. So, I know I'm telling you guys as you watch these videos, watch them one time through. Okay, then go back and take notes. Okay, when you go back the second time to take notes, you should not need to watch everything. You can kind of jump through and skip and find the pieces that you need. It's a very temperamental thing. I don't know what I'm not doing correct. It just doesn't like me. There it goes. Okay. Pull that that way. All right. Move it over here. Oh my gosh. All of that. Look at that. I misspelled use. You see, I don't know what that is supposed to be. But I'm gonna have to fix it because it will bother me. <laughs> and it might bother you. Oh, where did it go? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, I don't know why it doesn't like me. Nope. Oh, there's my cursor. Finally. Okay. Use a ruler to find the length of a segment drawn on a sheet of blank paper and the distance formula to find the length of a segment on a coordinate plane. Um, last thing I'm going to do with you for this video is down here, uh, bottom of page 13. There's a lot more pages to this lesson, but I'm not assigning these at the moment. Um, but we are gonna look at the first four, okay? So write the term. So this is taking us back to the very first uh, video clip of this lesson. Write the term that is suggested by each figure or description, then state whether the term is an undefined term or a defined term. So remember, we talked about what a undefined term was or a defined term. And let me just remind you that the most basic figures in geometry are undefined terms. They cannot be defined using other figures. Okay. Now, a defined term. are things that you can use with define using other figures, okay? So like defined terms are line segments and rays. Undefined terms are points, lines, and planes. So for number one, that looks like a pencil, I believe, sitting there. And we want to think of that as a line. Okay, uh, actually a line segment, not a line. Pencil doesn't go on forever. It is finite. <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna draw on top of it to show you like you'd have a point here and a point here and then a line connecting them. So it is a line segment, which is a defined term. So this is defined. Uh, number two, it's a leaf with a water droplet, okay? That is representative of a point, a giant point, but a point. Um, that is also, I mean, that is undefined, not also. Undefined. And if we look at three, so it's a, it has one arrow. That's what we call a ray. Rays are defined. And for four, this is a plane, which is undefined. All right, so 
that is it for this lesson. And we are now through lesson 1.1. You've made it for your, through your very first geometry lesson. Congratulations.